Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of, I want to say Design Recharge every time. I said for it for so many years. You might notice, oh, it's Creative Signite now. Welcome to Creative Signite. I am here with my friend, Demi, and I, he comes on multiple times. He's been on multiple times, but we are not doing a Where Are They Now? We could have Where Are They Now? A series, but we're changing it up because Demi and I talk on a regular basis, at least once a month. And we were talking about AI and he's been using like the Google engine to create images for years. Um, I'd say two years at least. Is that right? So uh, kind of a year and a half, I would say. Like before that, it was a very different technology. I have, have been doing that as well. But uh, yeah, I've been using the diffusion models for image generation for a year and a half now, I think since February 2022. And yeah, and I've been using the language models, which is the, the text stuff uh, from since November 9, uh, 2022. Yeah, November. So that's, we were talking about this and he kind of was talking to me and I was like, a light bulb went off. And I was like, oh my goodness, I can use this in my classes. I can use this in um, as I'm writing something and then maybe it can help me make it better. Um, it gives me other options. And I hadn't seen it like this. And I think one of the reasons, if you don't know what Creatives Ignite is, it's really for people who are solopreneurs or they are entrepreneurs. They're doing a lot of it on their own. They don't have anybody to show stuff to. Um, we have other groups. I have a group that's starting at the end of May. And um, that's where we can kind of, we have a, a, you have a goal and you work through it in the next 13 weeks. So again, so sometimes there's these big things like the podcast. And I try to bring people on that are going to, um, hey, Ioana, Ioana's here. Um, that's awesome. From Transylvania. Um, so Anyway, I am excited for Demi to share with y'all because I, maybe I was, and as a solopreneur, there's always seems like we're inundated with new technologies or new programs or new something. And sometimes I can be hesitant. And I know Demi is not hesitant. Can you just really quickly tell them why you are not hesitant about new uh, technologies. I know this is way down on our list, but um, I think it's good good time for it. And you're in Greece right now, but you sound like you're British, so give them a little bit of your background. Okay, so uh, first of all, uh, just to to get uh, the background stuff out of the way, I'm Dimi. I'm a co-founder of Simulon Branding, which is a brand identity design studio um, based in the UK. Generally, I used to live in London, then I used to live in Liverpool. My business partner is permanently in Manchester, and we have been designing brand identities with the focus on semiotics. Like, this is our main thing. Um, uh, the semi semiotics, um, you can find uh, preview the previous uh, episode that I did with Diane uh, somewhere around, I don't know, YouTube will sort that out. And uh, yeah, it was all about the study of meaning. So this is this is a, a good chunk of um, of our of our ex expertise in this situation. And I've been generally, uh, you know, thrust into technology since into my early years. I'm I'm very um, I'm I'm very much of a techno optimist and. I do think, especially my generation, millennials, we have this situation where we're, especially on the web, we have been web pioneers instead of instead of uh, web natives in in some sense. Um, so we have, you know, uh, seen the crossover between the analog and the digital, and then we saw. Uh, you know, a disconnected world and a connected world very much. And uh, so just processing everything and seeing everything and understanding how, how tools can help us uh, develop what we're doing is is really, really important to me as well. Uh, so this is this is the main the main reason where, you know, I, I tend to try everything in technology, especially when I think it will it will help my 
my work a lot. Uh, but even, even, even more importantly in this situation, I'm usually very much of a cynic when it comes to trends. Like I do like things that are here to stay and I'm usually, uh, you know, I've seen everything like, uh, you know, virtual reality glasses, then augmented reality and, uh, you know, it's going to be the next big thing. And then NFTs were going to be the, uh, the next big thing. And that's it. Like in general, I have this feeling where, you know, I'm, I'm not always swayed by these things. And I was, um, and I was reading in the same thing. I was reading about the, um, the, the, the new technologies in, in AI and I was sort of I understood what was going on, but having a first-hand experience is very different. So when, when I started trying these tools out, it was so different, so, so, so different. So um, the first-hand experience is what changed me in this situation. I do think we it is, it is something that will come to our lives and it will be equivalent or mo even more important than the internet itself which is, you know, a, a supremely a useful tool so far. Okay. That was a good um, intro and explaining. I'd love to know if you guys think in the chat, are you more, um, <laughs> what did Demi call it? What did you say? You are a skeptic. I'm a skeptic or a cynic or... Uh Oh something no! Like you that. said you were like tech positive or something. I can't remember. Oh yes, like I'm. 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 I'm very techno positive in that regard. Like I, I do believe in technology in general. Tech optimist uh, is what you said, uh, Iwana. Way to go! I knew. Okay, so if you could write in the chat if you are, you think that you are tech positive or whatever. That sounds like we're like we're testing positive for something. Um, or if you are more of a cynic or a, a laggard, as maybe um, Simon Cynic would say, um, you kind of wait and see and you maybe you're, you come in with the, the majority or something. Um, so we got some tech positives. Uh, lots of people are excited to hear about this discussion. Matt, I believe you're Western Massachusetts, right? Did I get everybody? The Pam's a wait and see techie. I love that. Amy Darling in Colorado. She's tech positive. Um, tech skeptic Shelby Arnett from Maryland, at least for the hot new trends. So in that, uh, Maya's a wait and see. In that, just kind of forming this, how do you know, you personally, Demi, how do you know what to push into and what not to? Do you... Like with NFTs, were you like all in or what with, was it? Uh, with NFTs, I was completely out of it. Um, like uh, in the beginning, in the beginning, I, I sort of started understanding that this could be um, a useful technology in very niche situations, especially in contract law, which is which is important. Uh, but at a certain at a certain situation, the the idea of everything turning into a grift. Um, What's that so, mean? A grift. A grift is when some people try to take advantage of a trend uh, without offering much substance. I think um, I, I I don't know if it's a UK versus US English thing. Uh, but that's the that's the the main idea of grift. Like it feels it feels like the shovel sellers in the in the gold rush uh, type of situation. So I'm very very skeptical about you know people who try to pretend that this is going to change, um, like AI by itself is something worth um you know, uh, switching to and doing that Well, AI is, it, it's like the internet. Is it, how, how stupid would somebody, you know, calling themselves internet expert sound to us today, right? It's just that it's a technology that's helping us, uh, do certain things. And I do believe, um, that there is already a little bit of a grift in, in, in the design space about this, but for me, and especially for the purposes of this this conversation today, I'm all about using AI as designers. Like, what will 
be of practical help to our tools and our toolkit and, and the way I see this. So, yeah. So you have a presentation for us and I'm going to just interrupt you and you guys can interrupt as well just by putting something in the chat. Thank you guys so much for being here. And if you didn't know, I'm in the church basement pretty much. So um, I'm just thankful to have a good place to have strong internet while I stay with my dad. Um, okay. Timmy is going to give it to us. If you guys have questions, just I will be monitoring the chat and you guys can just um, ask ask away. And Demi, I'm just going to interrupt you if if we yes, have please something. do because I'm going to have access to the to the chat now and screen sharing. Okay. So um, when I started designing this presentation, like I had this, I had this idea of you know calling this designing with your mind. I was I was meaning to talk to you about this so you could put it on your marketing thing, but uh, I, I I thought that nobody is going to understand the implication of this. Just let's let's talk about AI so it can can draw the attention it needs. Uh, but I'll explain myself right away. So um, I have been studying semiotics and the um, you know how do we mark things and what is design and what is communication in this situation so this is this is a beautiful picture um of nature like and there is there is nothing designed in this in this premise the only thing that is has been somewhat designed is the frame that the photographer designed uh, decided to um to to make their uh to make their frame about but in itself there is there is chaos in here and this chaos is reminding us that there is there has been no inter intervention here so this is something different like the this is um equally a picture of nature but now there has been some artificially placed order which is you know in this situation it's a mirror thing is it's very it's very immediately obvious but everything in this picture is generally natural is putting things in order is it's it's arranging things in a different unexpected non-chaotic and non-natural way which is the the point of design in this situation so designing is about making these choices like it was really really important for me to um art give you this context in order to to assess what is going on with with artificial intelligence and how it helps us in design so in order to make uh, in order to make pictures in this situation we we use certain tools this is an unreal engine 5 this is a video game development tool um the, the people use it to make worlds and video games and put trees and make all these mountains and water do their things and what is very familiar even to to branding designers and everybody else is that we use this sort of interface of panels on the right on toolbars on the top uh, the menus like this is this is the language that we have been using so far to communicate with the computer and tell it okay i need this this rock in on the edge i need the the water to to have this this kind of reflections etc so um this has been the interface uh we have been using up to today and the big thing about artificial intelligence in this situation is just it can enable us to create a different a different kind of interface so let's imagine that we we're we're in control of the matrix, right? We're in control of a, um, a very complex system that can generate anything we want in this situation. Like for the designer, the matrix is a very, very powerful design software. So we start from the beginning. We 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 have we have a blank slate, which is terrifying for most designers. And now now we have to um, now we have to make things happen. So. Uh, the most intuitive way in order to to make to make something in the situation and a matrix like situation is like asking it make me a house. So if you ask it to make you a house, it just gives you a house. The most boring, the most 
undifferentiated kind of house because this is the only thing you've asked for. So the point of the designer is to further add specificity and more specificity and more specificity to what they're asking for. So you can ask for a red roof, you can ask for the house to be um, to be two stories tall, you can ask it to be in the desert, you can ask it to have a, a tree, uh, you can ask it to, to have red trees, uh, to be in summer, winter. Like Making the choices is what gives us the, um, the design that, that we need. So in this situation, what AI changes for us a lot is that it takes us from a situation where our tools are panels and icons and tick boxes and menu bars, and it enables us to use natural language in order to make pictures. So these four pictures have been made with artificial intelligence. And basically, the more specific we are with these, the more um, like the desired effect they're going to be. Otherwise, they're, they, they aim to be as generic as possible. So there are, there, are, there are two things that have been happening in current technology. The one is language generation. The, the other is image generation. Both, both are really, really important for designers. So I will talk about the, the most important tools and get them out of the way and then show practically how, how we use them. Language generation, the most important tool right now is ChatGPT4. Um, it generates language. It can uh, You can ask it to write an email. You can ask it to, uh, to give you recipes. You can ask it to do a lot of things. It is a language generational tool. It's, it's not a search engine yet because it's prone to hallucination. Like if you if you ask you can ask it questions and it will try its best to answer, but sometimes just because it is about creating the language, if you ask it something, um, it it might give you a, a, a BS kind of answer, which is it will make up stuff that sound plausible. Like you can ask it about you know penguins in Australia, and it will you know give you something that sounds really really plausible. So for people using this. Focus on creativity, not productivity. Like, don't depend on this uh, so much. And the the fourth the fourth generation of this language model understands context up to thirty two thousand words, which is like eighty pages of A four paper. So let's get this out of the way. Go to image generation. The the tool I use and the the tool I I think it's strongest right now is Midjourney. It creates images from noise. I will talk to you about this. The, the main point is doesn't understand context at all. Like if you if we, if we go back in this situation and it generates this image with the house with the red roof, you can't ask it to do just do this roof green. Like it doesn't understand the context. Every every image generation prompt is um is uh is new. It's, it's happens again. So the the times are rapid right now. It used it didn't used to be the case. I remember when I was when I was using stable diffusion on Google Collab uh, notebooks. Um, I would be a, I, I would be having something like an image a day or something like that, and it would take it would take uh, about you know, two hours to generate, and then I wouldn't be able to use it again for, for several hours. Uh, but um, now that times are rapid, Midjourney can generate four images in, in one minute, and it's excellent for placeholders. So um, I'm just giving you information. I will come straight back to it. I just wanted people to understand what tools I'm going to be uh, demonstrating in this situation. So. So we let me any... ask you this. Doc has this question. If Don't answer it if you're going to be covering it. But it says, yep. um, Doc says, my understanding was that you could reseed that image and ask it to make it a green roof. Is that incorrect? Uh, it It's not incorrect. But for, for most intents and purposes, for people who are going to be using it for the first time, if they have experience with ChatGPT that... 
you know, directly, you just, you know, you type back your, your feedback about what you're getting. Um, it's not going to work. So I didn't want people to feel confused. There is, a, there, there are advanced things that I'm not going to capture today because, um, it does, it does warranty a few hours of your study people and your research, uh, you know, over several weekends, I guess. Um, but, uh, I, I just wanted to, to show you a few things. So the big, the big situation is how does this work? Like, how does the machine understand what is going on? And the thing is it doesn't, uh, so first of all, like, um, uh, it, it is like, uh, new uh, digital neural networks, they work as emergent intelligence compared to a centralized intelligence like humans have they are more like ants. So ants have this way of working together without each ant having language and coordinating with another, or there's a master uh, ant person working on things. So our, our ants work with pheromones. They understand what is happening in their immediate surroundings. And based on that, they, they use certain paths again and again and again and again and repetition and multiplication of these repetitions is what generates this emergent intelligence. So this is, this is, this is the way neural networks in the computers do this as well. They don't really understand yet what, uh, what we are talking about, what they're giving us. They just behave as a, as a whole ant colony in, in certain respects, uh, but none, uh, Nobody, you, you can ask no and on, on what's going on. So the way, the way they work is, uh, especially for image generation, essentially there's a, a bunch of switches which are randomly uh, turned on and off and on and off. And, uh, the, 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 the computer tries to understand, um, it, okay. Understanding is the wrong word. Uh, it tries to use statistics to guess if the result we want uh, um, can be can be acquired with flipping these switches or flipping these switches. Um, I can give you a sample of how it works, and especially in the early days, in the in the early days of stable diffusion, this was actually one of the first steps, like this was actually something we would get people using the journey now don't really observe the, the vagueness of things. So if I, if I click on, on this to play and we can, we can pause it several times, you can understand. So first the computer flips some switches at random generating noise. So these switches in visual, uh, in, in these visual elements, like they have 256, uh, points. So each of the colors is based on something like that. So, so based on that, they generate this noise. And when I click on it, you will see what, what you're going to be seeing is the opposite of, of, um, well, the equivalent of using sharpening your image in Photoshop. So it, tr the computer first tries to find edges and then from the edges, it tries to make this into a coherent image. So you can see how this is turning into this ballerina from, uh, you know, inspired Starry by Starry night. Oh. Yep, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So you can you can see this again. I'll just play it one one more time so you can understand. This is just finding edges and sharpening and finding edges and sharpening and just changing like the ants in here are trying to slowly manipulate the their the them their very neighborly pixels in order to to generate this image. So this is vaguely how it works. I don't want to and, talk too and much you about it. We put in text, right? You're yes. putting in text for this. You're, um, yes. And when you were first doing this, I, I would get these images from Demi, which I thought were awesome. Um, and he was like, in the style of blank and blank and do this and this. And so um, there was some interesting, uh, it really is a lot about language. And for, for me, this mm -hmm. is a harder um you know, I I can see it. You know, a lot of our clients will say, "Oh, I know it when I see it," and uh -huh. you're like, "That's so frustrating. That doesn't help me at all to get <laughs> to what I need." So, um, so how uh, Iwana says, "How does it know 
how Van Gogh looks like. I guess you can tell them. Yes. So essentially, essentially what is happening is, so you, you ask the question and you say, please make me a ballerina in the style of Van Gogh. And what is essentially tries to do is guess whether what it gives you is Van Gogh or not. So that's the, that's the big challenge. So, um, this has been developing over the years and the big, big, big problem with it was we didn't have enough people telling, telling it, this is not what I want. But applied to millions of ants in this situation uh, with, with many, many times and giving it the reinforcement we, we want, it can start to, to generate these things. So, um, so it has been, it has been specific images that we have been answering to computers for 10 or 15 years. Like, do you remember? Most people will, um, will remember that, you know, back in the day, there was this, um, this challenge by Google, uh, fire, find the fire hydrants, uh, point me to the buses in this image. Like how many, uh, how many wheels are existing this thing? So, uh, this is part of the human reinforcement training in this situation. So that's, that's the, the way it comes to it. So, um, last year, last year, uh, so when I started, this was the peak of, of technology back in the day, like the, the most I could do with this kind of, this kind of tool. Um, this was one of the first images I, I generated, like this is a Greek temple. And how long the, would it take to generate it, it something took three like hours. this? It, three? it would take three hours, wow. about, about three hours. And now things are very different. Like all of these have been made with mid journey fairly recently. And it's not even the, the latest version and that these things generate in under under a minute by themselves. It takes me a little while to, to customize my prompting, but this is, this is mostly how it works. So I will, uh, we were supposed to be talking about copyright and, and, um, you know, how, you know, how the, the training itself in this situation, if it's, um, if copyright is, is a challenge, it's not, I'll just give you a series of, a series of pictures and then we can uh, go back and discuss them. So this is, uh, this is, uh, uh, I call it, um, you know, the, the thing is just ready-made. Uh, I can call it, this is how it's called. We have remixes of things. We have depiction of existing things. We have inspired by things like this picture, for example. And uh, I'll talk to you about this old gentleman. And we have to understand the, the limits of copyright. So in order to ready-made images are the most ready-made art is the most challenging in terms of the, in terms of the copyright, like this urinal was made by someone else and it has been appropriated as, um, a ready-made art Dadaist object and art has been infused into it in this situation. So I think this is the most, the most extreme of situations in this, in this spectrum. So remix is slightly better. You still use images somebody else made, but you're changing them in a very sufficient way. And this is also day-to-day art. Um, nobody had any challenges calling this art or, uh, calling any copyright, uh, claims in this situation. And then you have depiction, which is different. Like you create unique, uh, things, not by using them, by using the object itself, but just depicting the object itself. And then you have something like, um, inspiration, which is, uh, you know, um, this is, uh, Dernita, uh, by, uh, Picasso and Picasso was, was not present in the bombing of Guernica, you had to, you had to find out by news reports and photographs like this, which is one of the main inspirations for this piece. This is also why the piece is in black and white. 
So the situation is like, is the is there a valid reason for, um, you know, uh, for the the producer of this photograph to be upset in this situation when uh, when Picasso is using his work as inspiration? So, from what I've understood, we're not even there with uh, we're somewhere along this this range when we talk about artificially uh, generated art or pictures. Uh, I don't want to call it art. If it is an artistic endeavor, it's something different. But in terms of in, in terms of productions of the pictures, essentially the computer doesn't doesn't combine images from somebody else. It's not a remix like this. It's not a depiction like this. It is inspiration. So um, it is for people who have been using it for quite a while, they will understand why um, that the pictures, the pictures that are inspired by the, the computer does not take them and merge them or remix them in certain situation because we, we have observed this phenomenon of the many fingered men. So the, the situation is none. Uh, so it is very common that in pictures generated by mid-journey or other artificial intelligent uh, engines, the number of fingers in a person's hands are wrong. So the thing is nobody paints people with the wrong number of fingers or nobody photographs people with the wrong number of fingers. The thing is the, the computer is inspired. It tries to understand when you flag something as so this this could be you know flagged as dramatic uh, you know the inspirations might be flagged as dramatic so when it generates it it tries to make it like the pictures people flag as dramatic or black and white or uh painting or um the old man but it's all about the flags it doesn't it doesn't take any images and blends them around in a mixer and and make this is this is how this is how the the software is generating these things i guess we have questions i see the number of uh, it says that um uh, uh doc said it not sure i would say the computer was inspired um and then iwana says what about the part where people say it has been trained on five billion images but this is this is true but the thing is the the training is done on marking these images as a certain kind and it just tries to produce it so in in a sense it's not uh it, it is about taking these pictures and m humans marking them and then it tries to compare what it made to the markers that other people made so um this is this is the this is the bit which is which is it 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 is like a a student trying to impress their professor trying to do what the professor wants and based on how the professor marked the other students the 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 kid is doing his part to to write an essay that the the professor will will like none of the words specifically have been taken by the other students trying to understand what your assessor wants is is what is training the system in the situation i hope i'm explaining this right yes so i have this image of many crayons so there, there is the other thing the other conversation is is um you know are computers going to to take our livelihoods and if this is something we want so so this is for me one of the one of the um, staples of 90s ni growing up during the 90s like is the, the many colored crayons which is a very new phenomenon in artistic endeavor like we didn't we didn't have that in the past people used to mix their colors by hand and the existence of you know uh, uh, a set of many colors uh, ready to be picked without needing to mix, without needing to know that you need to uh, need, you need blue and yellow to make green, or you need this 
um, you know, this rock to to merge with egg. Um, it, uh, having crayons of multiple colors ha hasn't taken from our creativity in the situation. It's just added uh, simplicity to the use of many more people. More kids get to play with crayons than you know in the in in the Renaissance where you know you had to find cobalt and blend it and just put in oil painting is just so different so it's again or the same with uh you know with pho photography like um um i i don't think you know having pictures taken at the party takes from the very old school way of having to find an expert who knows uh who knows everything about metal plates and photographic film and um uh, and composition and everything like it. Uh, I, I don't think that having the ac giving access to many people to do the thing, I, I don't think it has ever taken from our creativity in this situation. So the, these two, these two examples are my statement on on whether uh, we're going to be you know completely surpassed by uh, um, beauties or not in this situation. So I have I have a few ways to. Um, I have a few things to say about how we can we can use image generation uh, as designers, but are there any questions yet? Nope. Keep going. Okay. So, um, so one major thing uh, that we can immediately use uh, Midjourney for is generating compositions and understanding. So this is a grid. Uh, it's based on Piet Modrian. Uh, again, uh, it was um, really important in developing grids, I, I, I guess. And uh, so we can we can use uh, we we can use images we generated in order to guide us in more um, unconventional ways, which is is uh, something that I do very often. Not now that when I have to design a poster, when I have to design something, now I can. Uh, I can be inspired by different unconventional grids in this situation, so I love this uh, this kind of thing. So I would recommend it to everyone. Um, there are also more um, deliberate things about you know you want to you 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 want to come up with a layout about something. You would just want uh, uh, some some way of setting up the pages. Uh, you can you can be inspired by different uh, by different outputs. So these are. Uh, financial magazines. Uh, the the problem was financial magazines. Um, websites. I think. I I think this is this is where it demonstrates. You know, there is a certain uh, homogeneity, like what you would expect to find in in uh, um, a dribble or a different uh, sites like that. But um, generating layouts, generating colors, generating ideas on how you could approach. A project itself visually um, is very important, so I, I do think we're uh, we're going to be seeing this. So I recommend all these things: just generate layouts, generate uh, grids, or you know, even more abstraction compositions. This is uh, this is something that uh, works. So, um, but I can also show you how we've used uh, how we've used. The language generation models in in our business and and how uh, how it helped us develop branding for um, a self initiated project. So this is this is the idea of what would happen if we could grow coffee on Mars. Uh, and so we, uh, my business partner and I, we we have this thing where we we want to we want to make uh, coffee packaging. Uh, project and we didn't have a real life client in order to do this, so we we decided to uh, to make uh, ChatGPT our client and start working on branding based on that. Uh, so we could run all the workshops, we could run all the questions, understand you know make a, a business out of nowhere, out of where it didn't exist, and just testing scenarios and asking it different things. Uh, so it, this is very, very, very useful. So I, I will. Um, so yeah. in this, because um, this is what really clued me in on the possibilities. So when you were telling it, hey, I want you to be our client. Right. How uh, one thing I love about Demi is when he's speaking to 
the machine is what I'm going to call it for right now. He is very polite. Hello, <laughs> how are you today? Please, thank you. Um, and he has that conversation. And I was like, why? Because he was just doing it on the screen for me. And and tell him what you said. So so the thing is, for, for text, the way it works, it works like predictive text in your phone. So essentially, when you're typing up a message and your iPhone or Android phone just uh, prompts you to use this word or that word, this multiplied a few thousand times is what chat, chat GPT is about. So it's predictive text. So when, when you use in your prompt uh, words as please, thank you, good morning, goodbye, it understands this um, this uh, willingness to 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 be to be part of a business like context in this situation. So you're being professional with it. So it gets the prompt that the language you you want it to generate is going to be professional. Um, so that's the the reason. That's the reason. If you're being impolite, it will lead you to conversations where your your counterpart in the conversation is also impolite. So using please or abrupt, and, right? Or um, abrupt. Yes, uh, uh, yes, exactly. Maybe too direct. Un if helpful in this situation. There right. Are, there are biases in this uh, developed by the the developers of of ChatGPT, but um, it, uh, it generally it would even in an unbiased model it would pay to be uh, to be uh, timed. I guess. So in in the setup. How long was your paragraph or paragraphs of text that you set them up as the coffee? Uh, or is that so, it? We are building a case study. Is that all you gave them? So, no. Uh, so, all of this is just... Uh, so, we have a small screenshot here, but you, you will see how it worked. Like, we... We developed a lot of a lot of different things. So basically, we told it uh, we're building a case study. Where uh, can you help us? And you know, it it went with it. And then we tried asking things about the company and how it works. Uh, so um, we tried to understand the business model. Uh, so all the images generated from now on are also mid journey. Uh, I will tell you at the point it will stop. Uh, but uh, business model canvas is essentially uh, a way that we already use with our clients to understand their business. So we used it with ChatGPT, and it gave us it gave us much more than what I'm giving to you now. But essentially, you know, who are the key partners for your business? So it can be NASA, it can be sustainability partners, or who is your client? Our clients are high coffee, high end coffee enthusiasts environmentalists, uh, whoever. So we we basically run this conversation the same way we would run with, with our clients, but it didn't have performance anxiety. Uh, it was uh, to the point uh, really quickly, uh, we have been using it, uh, all, all, everything you see now, we have been using it alongside our, our real life clients as well in order to supplement some, some of the time that we don't then, get to have it. How so, long did this take from start to finish? Uh, it took about two hours uh, from start to finish, uh, just because we we're trying every every workshop and every every uh, exercise in the book. I this uh, is the stuff that I love though. This is the stuff my friend Faye and I we've she's like had real clients and she's put them in and. But I love, so I love these images and I didn't know that these were AI because of the hands. I knew the thing with the hands is weird and AI doesn't do hands really well. And I was like, well, where'd you find these images? And he's like, I made them on mid journey. And as you Good. see them all together, this was one of the images that I used for the promo. It, it has the same sort of feel in this background. And I, I definitely want Demi to explain how he got some of these because he, in the image before so we'll have to come back to that one if if we don't address it in a minute but i love that he's able to create these profiles these customer profiles with artificial intelligence because usually what we're doing is just going through stock photography or unsplash or something and we're just trying to find something that is sort of what we think but i love that you can create this feel you can create the kind of cup that they would be serving. You can, you know, have the professional person and you can really um, get what you're wanting more 
anyway, I love that the images were connected to chat GPT telling um, Demi about the company that they were making this brand for. Okay, keep going. Yeah, so for, for us, it was really important to understand who Sarah was. Again, this is not every, it, it, this is just a 10% of what we, we managed to develop as a, as a profile. And developing audience profiles with our clients has been the most uh, taxing uh, in terms of time with them. So it usually takes 50% of our time with them. And wow. We, so many more questions because they're slow to respond. They don't really know what we're looking for uh, in this situation. They sometimes our our clients don't have the imagination to just develop a a person from scratch and you know find out what brands they like or what car they like or whatever. Uh-huh. So we develop this, and with the with the help of a real client, we can give them these profiles almost in real time, and we can modifying these based on their feedback rather than um, the, rather than ask them to create this from scratch and this can be a game changer. Uh, so we have two profiles. Uh, uh, one is US based, the other is um, UK based. Like we, we're trying to, to understand what kind of people would go for this brand. And then we use the exercises that we have to create delight. So how do we create tailored plans to to reach our target markets? And this is very important. So um, the 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 creativity of the language model and give you ideas on how do I as a brand make something that Sarah will love. So this is uh, a list of suggestions that our clients now can. Well, in this situation, they're, the clients are fictional, but our clients can take and immediately you know, start, uh, assess, employ. And again, the computer itself is hallucinating, doesn't know what it, what it, uh, what it says. It's not, it's not accurate. It's not proven, but these situations there, there are some, some things that are real clients can assess whether, you know, having a loyalty problem, that uh, program is, is going to help or creating a community platform or whatever. So wait, wait, we, wait, we have some questions. So yes. before you keep going, so what, um, Tate wants to know, like, we'll get back to that, I guess, when we get to the images, and I'm going to write it down, Tate. Um, but Alexius says, could AI help fill the gap with a client if a client used it in a similar way? Like, okay. if, if so a client's having trouble coming up with the persona, their typical client, typical mm-hmm. customer, could they use AI or would you, is that something that you would, we could address? have our clients well the 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 thing the thing is uh it's all about asking the right questions i think the the expertise of the brand identity designer is just to make sure they have the they have the good questions in order to do that but the the client can absolutely um you know if if as a client you've seen this many times or especially if you have a branding team or things like that you can absolutely ask the right questions and just go along with it uh, because, um, yeah, it can, it can give very, very valuable, uh, insights to the client. So yes, please. Our clients should, uh, should ask it, uh, should ask it, uh, right away. So, yeah. Um, so then we started developing uh, during our brand attributes, um, uh, exercises with them. So we have this thing where, uh, it's based on, on, uh, core which is an existing framework we have um we have a conversation about words that describe our audience our voice our impact our uh our culture our emotions and we we use this in order to uh we we use the machine in order to generate them and also if you're using similar exercises now we have been tempted and we want to test with our clients whether instead of asking them to come up with these as we go because that's the the form of the exercise we can give them uh, a list of you know 200 and ask them to pick uh what they what they feel is more relevant so it just it it eliminates performance anxiety in terms of the clients uh, because they, they're not sure we have a, a timer of two minutes like what is going on uh just giving um, and the, sometimes they second guess themselves. We can eliminate all that uh, just by um, 
you know, doing some some uh, some work before we meet with them, so we're prepared in in our conversation about this. So so based on these, we take them and we put them together in a brand statement. So this brand statement, we did it by hand by using the 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 words that have been already artificially generated uh, before. So this we did by hand because um, the format of the brand statement is still kind of um, uh, kind of limited in this situation. So it doesn't you don't really need the machine in in, in order to make it. Um, so this uh, this is the logo that we we developed for this business. This is uh, the planet Mars and its two uh, moons, Deimos and Phobos. Uh, so, uh, and the typeface is sinking sands. So all of this has been generated by us. It wasn't made by, uh, mid journey or uh, an artificial intelligence. Like we came up with the symbolism and the way it should work and, and how, um, how it gets put all together. But the thing is now we have this, uh, you know, in order to make the brief, it took, uh, seconds instead of. Uh, instead of hours in in this uh, situation, so again the color system uh, developed by us. Uh, it wasn't it was made by AI. Um, the you know uh, some information about the look construction. This is general things, and again the packaging we came up. Yeah, at, yeah. So this is uh, so basically is what we wanted to, to showcase. So in all of the packaging we have metal. Uh, elements with uh, uh, alongside a splash of Martian yeah, dust. I love that, and uh, which is uh, both inspired by coffee itself and by the ground of Mars in this situation. Um, the the machine helped us uh, come up with uh, some BS about you know, you know which station facility and which source and which farm in Mars all these are when when it's harvested in winter 2037 and things like that did so you it, did you generate this image in AI no we didn't generate no this image this is a image mock -up? designed by us okay uh the, the the only thing that is generated here is the essentially what is lorem ipsum but in a very specific way it's just coming up uh coming up with real sounding uh real looking text in this situation so all of this was designed by us uh same for um uh same for here like uh -huh. these are the ground the the ground coffee uh, or in beatings packaging so again cold brew um all the the taste profiles and all this have been generated by the ai the barcode is is working actually it takes uh it takes you to our website right now nice um, uh, so again, different, uh, different, dif different uh, pieces of packaging that we we made again with a with a um, ground uh, of Mars. Uh, we had some ideas for cold brew. All of these are designed by us. It's just uh, we um, it made our life so much easier uh, to do this in in this so way. Were were the mockups already existing or did you yes, make Yes, the mockups were already existing. They're from Envato. We we bought them like uh right. like we we used to do. But essentially, like in terms in terms of, of using Lorem Ipsum, like this uh this is beyond, you know, great. And it helps. So these are uh pans uh um for cold brew coffee that can be, you know, as uh, sorted in, in a really nice way. So um you know, uh, container uh for this okay so can you go back to the people yes. um sarah and the guy i have my text my chats over his name so i don't know but tate yeah. asked what kind of prompts or, or go back to the one where it's like the it's like the gopro can you do that one first because yep. that was one i i asked the almost exact same question tate when we were talking before yes so tate asked what kind of prompts are you getting are you using to get the photos so real so tell them kind of what you were getting here using to okay get these. so so in order to make re realistic images you have to understand again this is this is all about this is all about the tagging and not the images themselves so many pictures on the internet are clear but they're not tagged as clear so most of the tags used by people to mark these images is um 
or things about uh, about camera lens, camera apertures. Uh, so I can I can put the the whole thing in the uh, in the chat uh, in just a second, so I c you can find it. But it's mostly keywords that have to do with you know GoPro and F1 stop and and all that. So I can just give you the whole prompt here and read it to you as well. Uh, that would be great. Because I yeah. think this is this is where Demi using this for a year and a half or using an image generator for a year and a half, he has, this is what he's talking about us practicing. It's not like we, our first day on Mid Journey are going to probably be able to create something like this. But one of the things I asked about the other image, like with Sarah, I said, oh, did you find her? And he said, no, these are all um, generated, which I also, uh, I thought that was, I thought that would be really nice for us to be able to create something that wasn't someone else's photograph. And that's what I asked. Uh, and when Demi and I were talking about copyright was, so we have, I, I said, is the computer just taking somebody else's photo and they're doing, so can you explain that a little bit? Sure. Because it is completely new, not there's probably not a person that looks like Sarah. No, Sarah, Sa Sarah doesn't exist. Uh, so that's that's a hundred percent unsure right now. Uh, what is what is happening is uh, basically we we're using we're using we use the same things uh, that uh, Diane will will post in a in a second. So uh, basically uh, the the machine is trying is trying to guess if this is what I want. And if I'm very specific about what I want, it will try its best to do that first, and then and get then give me the answer. So um, uh, I can I can read it to you. Is uh, um, epic, beautiful scene, cinematic, post production, depth of field, cinema photography, 55 millimeter lens, f uh, eight ISO 100, shutter speed, lighting, accent lighting, like this. Probably a hundred, a hundred keywords that we put in this in order for this to be so, um, you know, so realistic in, in the situation, and um, that's basically the basically, uh, you, you know, the, the the way the way we we handle this this conversation. So, understanding what makes a good picture. If you have been using Mid Journey, you can start seeing what other people are making with Mid Journey. Start to understand what makes a, a prompt work. The first 100 are going to be bad, the same as everything that we do in, in creative life. Uh, yeah, but that's the um, that's the that's the the way we handle things. So we barely have time. I'm trying to get it uh, to do it, but I will put it underneath um, when you are in. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, it'll be in the show notes that will be on the page. I am also having trouble. Uh, pasting it in so I will make sure that it's there and if anybody wants to text me right now if you're just really hate just I think it's a spam me. it's a spam safety measure from from the zoom mm -hmm. I think I think do we, so do we have any questions so um side question Tate said any resources you would suggest to help learn prompts for mid journey so I think that's a great question uh, well, Midjourney itself. So you ha you will be using Midjourney and the application called Discord. But make a point of going to the actual website of Midjourney, logging in into your account, and when you log in into your account, you will see the feed of the most beautiful pictures generated right now in Midjourney, and you will see what other people are making with it. And try to be social on the Discord servers about this, like people talk about about prompt generation. But the the main the main thing is um, the the main thing is instead of trying different keywords, try adding more and more and more and more. There's no shame in using 100 keywords. Uh, it it only makes the thing more specific. So if if you have uh, and 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 also just be uh you know uh, knowing a lot of art history knowing a lot of of design history obviously helps because again some things are tagged so you can you can get a sense of 
example of how these are are uh, used. So okay. I just I was able to add it as an image as a um, text document. Um, that was the only way. So hopefully um, you guys can get. Um, and you know I noticed that there's like some things that are not spelled correctly. Who cares? It doesn't. It didn't didn't stop him. So we don't it's have a, to be yeah. so specific and so exact in our um, just um, in as we're trying to create. When you were creating the picture of Sarah or the other guy who I still can't remember his name. Like. Um, um, oh, so Josh uh, Gooch said he has a LinkedIn contact that's publishing some ebooks on this topic. So um, maybe we can can go there and check that out. I super appreciate you sharing that, uh, Josh. Um, Michael, so to get that same sort of warm tone, it's just you're just writing sort of what you are yeah, wanting. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm asking for a graphic designer. Uh, from London, I, I give the same the same information about the uh, the camera. Like the camera will make it look very realistic. Uh, we're very lucky because coffee. Um, um, when people are holding cups, the engine understands better how many fingers the person could have. This is what this is where we saved it. Uh, thankfully. Uh, so, um, and then fr from there on is, it was just a matter of us understanding, uh, understanding the person more and making sure that we had the right information. So it's graphic designer, uh, lives in Shoreditch, London. We gave them these words because, you know, there's a very specific culture that, that happens there. Uh, we had, we had put a few brands of specific coffee shops in this situation. So that helped. Uh, it was just, a uh, um, yeah, I, I know I covered a lot of things, uh, but I really hope it wasn't too superficial. for everyone. No, no, I think this was great. And I hope you guys, um, had fun watching this. I, I really like that he was able to create the, uh, the look and feel without having some of the things that, that we would normally need um i love that this is great for a fake project um tate says this was awesome just signed up for mid journey that's awesome i did have two uh links that are the chat gpt and um mid journey and if you wanted to watch uh dimmy's last episode he's been on three times now um i think just three but there those are all in the chat and they will be down below if you're watching on youtube and i want to you guys to know how you can get in touch with Demi. So symbolonbranding.uk dot no dot co dot uk co dot uk or at symbolon dot branding in Instagram, Twitter, uh, one am. So that's the that's the way to reach me. I uh, my my final word of advice is especially mid journey is don't be lazy. Don't use it to replace yourself. Use this as a tool. That you know, use it to do what Illustrator or Photoshop or InDesign cannot yet do for you. Don't use it as a replacement. It will be gener generic. It will be boring. Use it to understand your clients better and just make sure that you give them uh, something excellent. Um, uh, that's my final word of advice on this. Well, I also think it doesn't replace you necessarily using an Illustrator to create the. Oh no! A, an illustration. Not. It it is not going to be as good as a person, but for something like this, I think this is a great way to use it, where you're not kicking anybody out of a job. It's just that you are enhancing what you are able to do, or um, helping a client not be so limited because they just didn't have the right thoughts, or they were having um, some anxiety during the workshop. One. But, can I, can I interrupt? It's Please. very important. And I, I don't want to miss this. So this is um, for for everybody who is actually a designer and they have tried working on a laptop. They will understand. Uh, they will understand this. This is going to be a game changer for people with limited mobility uh, because uh, manual skills are still very very relevant. Whoever has tried replacing their usual setup with a 
a laptop's trackpad will understand it, understand it. This is just a new interface that we're going to be using and people who can only use language or can only type uh, or can only, you know, can't move their hands in the way we do. This is super, super, super helpful for them. It's just a change of interface. It's really, really important too. So uh, I want to so ask you this um, before we go. What is the biggest hurdle you faced as you were learning? Um, is it was it Chat GPT harder or was so, Mid Journey? Um, Mid Journey uh, image generation in the beginning was really slow, um, and it needed uh, a lot of a lot of effort to make pictures that just weren't cutting the mustard. In in many cases, like oh, I'll just put it back again. Uh, chat GPT is different. Like, look at this thing. It's just terrible. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, chat GPT was uh, a game changer in the beginning. I think the, uh, what is problematic right now is the scale where it grows. Like when we have adoption spikes, when more, more people get to, uh, get to, um, to sign up, um, in, in big spikes. It gets dumber in some way, just doesn't have the, the amount of memory it, it uh, normally has. Uh, so it really doesn't understand what you're talking about in certain situations. Uh, but no, the, they have been, um, the, the hurdles are more about um, time now than anything else. Like they're really, really easy to use. Okay, so it, they're really easy to use if you're good explainer if you can explain well and i think tate said this and i saw josh has a question i'm going to make sure i get that um tate says it's amazing as a designer that doesn't draw well but can explain what i need and this is i think one of the things that is really um that's really great um josh asks is this case study the one the red planet available anywhere to review more in depth and I'm, is it on your website yet? It's it's not yet. So you are the first people who have seen this. We're going to be releasing this uh, from Monday. Uh, it's going to live on our website. Uh, eventually, it's going to have its own website uh, so that people can uh, join. Because for us, this is uh, this is something that is going to evolve. So what we're thinking right now is every service that we are going to include, like uh, naming a brand or, uh, you know, we can use Red Planet as a client and every idea we have about packaging, ev everything that we want to demonstrate, uh, it can live within the same ecosystem in, in the situation. Uh, so, yeah. So this is a great um, thing. So uh, um, I have a alumni who had started illustrating, I don't know, back in 2014, I think. And he illustrated this robot and it was pretty rough. And then every year on that same day that he posted this robot, he illustrates a new robot and he's a much better illustrator now. But yeah. it would be interesting if you took that the the first image that you did, the Greek simple, and you use now, you use your experience based because you've practiced, you now know how to tell it what you want. Uh, Matt says it would be neat to see how this image would evolve based on Demi's experience with the prompts. And so I do. You can, you can already see this on my Instagram account, my personal Instagram. I put it. I put it on the on the on the chat. Yep. So you, uh, if you go, if you like the, this, I'm making triplets on Instagram, and you can see how the my style has evolved as time passes instead of this. Uh, so people can uh, can have a look like this is, uh, you know, you can scroll in and it's just, you know, very, very different as time goes by. And the the things that are you already see here, they're four months old. Like um, uh, it's it's getting even better. The technology is getting better and I'm getting better in, in asking uh, the relevant uh, prompts. So, yeah. I love that. I hope that this was interesting for y'all. This was interesting for me, for sure. Um, Alexia says, personally, I like the openness of Mid Journey site. Everyone's tries are there to see. And I also think that that's interesting as well because we do, um, it's better when we don't think that everything comes out perfect. Uh, and when we see other people struggling as well, it makes us not feel so uh, alone or like, we're never going to get it. Ah, right? So, 
just using simple for maybe you're writing an email and you need a you want a better um, uh, subject line. When I when I was in design school, uh, um, one of the professors said like. The point is to have a stack of papers in your portfolio, which is as as tall as you. Like, if you don't develop that, you're you're not there. Yeah. Well, um, next week, I am excited to be back, and I'll be in the same room here in Georgia. So, um, I am just blanking on who is next week. But oh no, I know who it is. It's a uh, Nathan Yoder who I think I had him on in 2014, maybe even 2013. So very, very beginning, he um, had been on a few times. So I'm excited to have him back on. Um, <clears throat> and just thank you guys for tuning in. And definitely thanks for staying up late, Demi. I appreciate it greatly. And Of course, of course. Uh... And so does Tate. <laughs> Thank you, everyone, for your attention and your time. Uh, it's always a pleasure being here, Diane. I'm uh, very, very happy to be here again. And yeah, do, do you, have you had people come come over more than three times? Yes. Well, Mari has been on a whole bunch. Uh, um, I need I need to break the slack of that. Let's see. Okay. Well, we will. We'll have to work on that. You just keep coming up with great presentations, and I am. I'm just, I'm glad to see people. Laura, I haven't seen you in a while, so it's really nice. Um, and it says you're in Chicago, so I was right at my guessing. Um, I, I'm, it's just cool to see this. It's cool to see. And for me, I started with Chat GPT. I, our painter at uh, where I teach at the University of South Alabama, he uses Mid Journey and he's a traditional oil painter. So if you're thinking, oh, you know, like this is not, he, he's embracing it. And, now he can have things, um, visual things to draw from that are not copyrighted. So that's also for me as an illustrator, if I'm trying to figure something out or a robot with a really cool um, maybe panel of buttons and levers that I can actually get Mid Journey to do it for me and I'm not taking somebody else's image. And to me, that's a I'm still going to draw it myself, but I want to draw, I want to see what it would look like as realistic as I can. And I think that's another, a good way for us to use it as a tool. It's a tool to me. It's a tool like a, uh, like my power drill or my power screwdriver. I do not want to build a house <laughs> with a nail and a hammer. So that's, that's what I'm thinking. And I like that Demi is very, clear uh, he's not always so jumping on every bandwagon but he jumped on this and i saw him really grow and then i saw how i could use it and i thought hey i bet other people might be apprehensive maybe this would be a good thing to sh because sometimes you know we're, we're working alone we don't always get to talk about this stuff we see it happening but we don't really have time to play so which things are the best um um uses of our time that could actually make a big bang so anyway i hope i think you guys really liked it so i'm really glad that um demi could come and share and i think the red planet stuff is just really cool and i will see you guys next week with nathan yoder you want to say any last bit demi no thank you everyone uh, i'm i'm always happy to see you it's always good to see you. And all the links will be down below if you're watching on YouTube or you're listening on SoundCloud. They're right below. Obviously, if you're here live, you know that they're in the chat. You can always come live. It's free. You just have to give me your email. Bye, y'all. Bye-bye.